Seventeenth Day of Waiting on God by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Waiting on God in Times of Darkness. I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 17. Here we have a servant of God waiting upon him, not on behalf of himself, but of his people, from whom God was hiding his face. It suggests to us how our waiting upon God, though it commences with our personal needs, with the desire for the revelation of himself, or of the answer to personal petitions, need not, may not stop there. We may be walking in the full light of God's countenance, and God yet be hiding his face from his people around us. Far from our being content to think that this is nothing but the just punishment of their sin, or the consequence of their indifference, we are called with tender hearts to think of their sad estate, and to wait on God on their behalf. The privilege of waiting upon God is one that brings great responsibility. Even as Christ, when he entered God's presence, at once used his place of privilege and honour as intercessor, so we, no less, if we know what it is really to enter in and wait upon God, must use our access for our less favoured brethren. I will wait upon the Lord, who hideth his face from the house of Jacob. You worship with a certain congregation. Possibly there is not the spiritual life or joy either in the preaching or in the fellowship that you could desire. You belong to a church with its many congregations. There is so much of error or worldliness, of seeking after human wisdom and culture, or trust in ordinances and observances, that you do not wonder that God hides his face in many cases, and that there is but little power for conversion or true edification. Then there are branches of Christian work with which you are connected, a Sunday school, a gospel hall, a young men's association, a mission work abroad, in which the feebleness of the Spirit's working appears to indicate that God is hiding his face. You think, too, you know the reason. There is too much trust in men and money. There is too much formality and self-indulgence. There is too little faith and prayer too little love and humility, too little of the spirit of the crucified Jesus. At times you feel as if things are hopeless, nothing will help. Do believe that God can help and will help. Let the spirit of the prophet come into you as you value his words and set yourself to wait on God on behalf of his erring children. Instead of the tone of judgment or condemnation, of despondency or despair, realize your calling to wait upon God. If others fail in doing it, give yourself doubly to it. The deeper the darkness, the greater the need of appealing to the one only Deliverer. The greater the self-confidence around you that knows not that it is poor and wretched and blind, the more urgent the call on you who profess to see the evil and to have access to him who alone can help, to be at your post waiting upon God. Say on each new occasion, when you are tempted to speak or to sigh, I will wait on the Lord who hideth his face from the house of Jacob. There is a still larger circle, the Christian church throughout the world. Think of Greek, Roman Catholic and Protestant churches and the states of the millions that belong to them. Or think only of the Protestant churches with their open Bible and orthodox creeds. How much nominal profession and formality! How much of the rule of the flesh and of man in the very temple of God! And what abundant proof that God does hide his face! What are those who see and mourn this to do? The first thing to be done is this, I will wait on the Lord who hideth his face from the house of Jacob. Let us wait on God in the humble confession of the sins of his people. Let us take time and wait on him in this exercise. Let us wait on God in tender, loving intercession for all saints, our beloved brethren, however wrong their lives or their teaching may appear. Let us wait on God in faith and expectation until he shows us that he will hear. 
let us wait on god with the simple offering of ourselves to himself and the earnest prayer that he would send us to our brethren let us wait on god and give him no rest till he make zion a joy in the earth yes let us rest in the lord and wait patiently for him who now hides his face from so many of his children and let us say of the lifting up of the light of his countenance we long for for all his people i wait for the lord my soul doth wait and my hope is in his word my soul waiteth for the lord more than the watchers for the morning the watchers for the morning my soul wait thou only upon god end of seventeenth day